How's it going everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through the treatment or retouching process that I go through whenever I edit any of my kind of sports photography that I can then use in my designs, obviously go ahead and cut them out and then yeah, just use them in my composition. Uh, in today's video, I'm going to be using this picture of Bellingham as it's got quite a nice um, lack of harsh lighting. Uh, with quite a nice pose and there's quite a lot of details in the picture. It's quite high quality So I thought it'd be a good example to use uh, to kind of showcase what we're doing So this is the before shot as you can see the skin is kind of washed out and it's looking a little bit green There's not really any kind of hard contrast used the image doesn't really pop essentially uh, And then the edited version of it as you can see it looks uh, quite a lot better the skin actually looks real and not like zombie-ish. As you can see, there's quite a lot of yellow and green undertones in this. Uh, we've got a bit of green lighting on the teeth and especially on the kit as well. So we'll be getting rid of that. We'll make the eyes pop a bit more. We'll add some more harsh lighting and shadows. We'll add a little bit of a hue and saturation layer to kind of create a light effect coming from the top left. Uh, and yeah, let's get started. So going through the steps i'll just create a new group for this picture i've just turned this into a smart object just basically so we can go through and remove anything if we need to moving forward so the first step of what we're going to do is going to go into filter camera raw and we're going to lift the shadow slightly just because there's a little bit of detail missing here underneath his chin so we'll go into light and we'll lift the shadows by about 20 i think that looks pretty nice and even though the image is kind of high quality there's still a little bit of a noise and pixelation so we'll go into detail and we'll go into noise reduction and we'll probably go around 40 and then to counteract a little bit of the loss of details we're going to bring up the sharpening by around 20 so that's looking a lot better already so now kind of to further uh, kind of showcase the details that you've got on the image we're going to bring up the um, where is it now the effects I'm going to go into clarity and we're going to just make it around 20 again I'd probably say that's looking a little bit better again just brings a little bit of contrast into the image um, and make the details pop even more then we're going to go into color I'm going to bring the temperature down slightly just to kind of counteract some of these yellowish tones in the skin and then let's go into light again. I'm going to just bump up the contrast slightly, maybe by around 10. Um, bring up the highlights a little bit as well, maybe around 20. And then the last step in this camera raw filter is going to be the removing of the green hue, especially around the kit. So again, like I showed in my previous video, what we do is just go into color mixer, go into saturation, get the greens and just turn them all the way down and that will remove the majority of them. So there's step one already. Uh, if we just turn this off, as you can see, it's already done quite a lot to the cutout, which is great, uh, but we're not done just yet. The next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna apply a smart sharpen. So we're gonna go to sharpen, smart sharpen, and I've noted down these, oh, they're already preset. So the amount we're gonna use is 141%. The radius is 0 0.6 pixels. A reduced noise is on 23% and we're going to use the lens blur and um, just to kind of show you the before and then the after it just brings a little bit of uh, the details through so we're going to apply that and again if we hide this you can see the difference it's making already uh, after the smart sharpen we're going to create some exposure adjustment layers so we'll just click this little button down here, adjustment layers, and we're going to go into exposure. And whilst holding alt or command, we're just going to clip it to this, uh, to this layer. So the first one that I usually do is the shadows. So let's bring this down to around four, 4.5. Well, just under 4.5, just so you get a nice dark selection. Maybe bring the offset a little bit down to like 0 0.004. And then the gamma correction, you can kind of play around with this, but let's just leave it at one for now. So now when you press Control I or Command I uh, to invert the layer, just so you can hide this, and then we're gonna get a nice soft brush of um, around, I wanna say 10% opacity. I think that's pretty good. And we're gonna just reduce the size a little bit and start with the face. So with the light coming from the top left, I'm just gonna create a little bit of shadows underneath his chin and this area here on this side of the face slightly we're going to do some shadows just underneath his eyebrows eye ridges so a little bit around the eyes as well maybe on this side of the nose 
underneath the nose, a little bit more on this side of the face, inside the ear as well. I think that'll work quite nicely. And then we'll move down further and kind of add a little bit more around the arm here because we're going to create a shadow. I'm going to do the same kind of moving down with the arm. Obviously, if the light's coming from the top left, uh, the lighting is already kind of similar on the picture already. So that kind of makes a nice guide of where we're gonna apply the shadows, but we're just gonna paint it in a bit more, just to kind of make these a little bit harsher. Uh, I'm gonna do the same here a little bit, and I'm gonna kind of add quite a big chunk of it to his back, as the majority of the light is gonna be blocked. So again, the before and after, as you can see, it's already doing quite a bit, which is quite nice. I'm quite happy with that, and then, and um, to kind of counteract that, we're going to add some more highlights. So again, we're going to create another adjustment layer. We're going to go exp not curves. We're going to create another exposure layer. And then I'm just going to drag it underneath here and drag it to the top. Uh, there's probably a quick way of doing that, but uh, that's kind of my work around. But for this one, instead of going a minus value, we're going to take it to the positive to bring out some highlights. And again, I'll probably settle around 3.5 and I'm not going to mess around with anything else. So we're just going to press control and I again to invert the layer mask and now we're going to go back in with the same brush and kind of just paint in some of the highlights to his face starting out painting some of his nose maybe some of his lips as they'll be hit quite a bit by the by the light source from the top left paint a little bit more of the hair in maybe some of his chin and his cheeks slightly but i'm going to take away some of this actually just don't overdo it because we're going to do some more adjustment layers to it yet. And then we're going to go down and kind of do the same to the rest of, uh, of his arm here. As you can see, you know, the light is coming from top left. So we're just going to hit this kind of area of the picture and leave all of this darker. So let's move down, maybe paint some of his fingers in, some of his fingers down here. And then you can also add some of the highlights to the ball just so it looks like it's hitting the light and then maybe some to his chest. But that's pretty much that for now. As you can see, we're already working it quite nicely. But now let's move on to the next step. What I'm gonna target is the teeth and the eyes. As you can see, there's a little bit of color bleed, there's a little bit of green and yellow. So I'm just gonna create a basic black and white mask and again, just drag it down and drag it to the top so it's linked to the same kind of sequence here. Uh, I'm just going to do control I again to hide it and then we're going to go in this time with maybe well I'll probably just do a hundred and you can just paint in the selection which can be toned down later on with the opacity so just paint in the eyes quite a bit here don't go fully into his eye as that should remain a little bit red but then the eyes are done let's move on to his teeth so let's just paint in the teeth. He doesn't have a lot of them showing, which is quite easy for us, but obviously they, they look a little bit too fake. So what I do, I usually bring down the opacity to around 70%, just so it doesn't look too fake. Uh, let's keep that realism a little bit. But now that we've done all the adjustment layers, you can see the skin is still looking pretty washed out and a bit yellow. Uh, so we're going to create another selective, uh, selective color. We're going to create another adjustment layer, which is a selective color. We'll drag it down and above again, just to target the skin tones. So the skin tones usually work in the the reds and the yellows. In this case, we're going to target the yellows specifically, uh, and we're going to just go in and adjust this. So for the magenta value, let's bring this up to around 40, just to kind of get a little bit of color back so it's not as yellow. Uh, then the yellow, going to tone it down to like minus 25. And then let's bring the black to about minus 11. So as you can see straight away, we've got rid of that yellow tint to his skin. It's looking a lot more realistic in real life. He doesn't look as dead now. Um, and yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm quite happy with that. Now, one thing that I like to do, I don't know if this is a very common thing to do, but I like to create a color lookup layer, which is a three strip color. And let's just drag it down again, bring it back up. And this kind of just adds a little bit of vibrance and uh, makes the colors pop. And it just looks a little bit more alive and a little bit cartoony-ish, I want to say. But that's the whole point of art. You don't want realistic, 100% realistic looking pictures unless you're doing like a kit swap that's meant to be going on a on some sort of like club page or something like that. So 
obviously that looks nice i am quite happy with that but i do think it's a little bit too harsh so let's just bring it down to about 50 percent just to bring a little bit of color back into this picture and as you can see that just makes it pop a little bit more um but now uh, another thing that we'll be doing is kind of highlighting the shadows and highlights a little bit more so we're going to create a new layer then we're going to just go into this and just you can select white or black just make sure it's fully white or fully black and then you can go into this uh, percentage here and change it to 50 percent black which creates a 50 percent gray essentially fill it all in and then we can drag it down again into this sequence and then turn it to overlay as you can see it's not doing anything just yet which is what happens when you have the gray in 50 percent and now we're going to create a shadows and highlight map essentially with the dodge and the burn tool so dodge highlights and burn obviously creates some harsher shadows so i'll probably use a brush of around 15 percent exposure and we can just go in and kind of highlight the more uh, light areas on bellingham just to make those highlight areas a little bit more contrasted essentially and make them stand out a little bit more make it a little bit more stylized but not too much so don't go too hard on this and um, just do enough to make it pop a little bit more i've been saying pop a lot but that's essentially what it does so i'm just going to bring out some of the some of the details on him again just don't do too much just enough and then we're going to do the same kind of on his uh, on his arm here same with his hand and then especially on the fingers just to bring out a little bit of that light on his fingers and then we're going to do the same on the ball as well just at the top and then maybe get a little bit of the fingers down here that might be affected and a bit of the shirt that's not covered up by his arm or the ball so already as you can see before and after it's just making it pop a little bit more <laughs> i'm going to keep saying pop in this video but that's essentially what happens. So now let's move on to the burn. Um, we're gonna do some of the harsher shadows. So I'm just gonna go in underneath the eyes. Again, I'm just actually, let's turn this brush down around 25. Uh, and yeah, just kind of play around with it. Obviously, this is kind of a rough guide, a quicker guide that I'm doing. But you guys spend, can spend a lot more time doing this uh, and kind of experimenting what works and what doesn't work for you. But we're doing essentially the same thing as we did with the exposure layers uh, just kind of painting in and adding some harsher shadows uh, and highlights in this step maybe a little bit more here and i'll just get a larger brush and just kind of paint in the back here but yeah that's looking looking pretty nice already as you can see the before and then the after it's just yeah making it a lot more harsher a lot more contrast and uh makes it a little bit more alive essentially it stands out it's not as flat the image doesn't look very flat it makes it look a little bit more 3d in my opinion but now that that's done let's create a glow layer so realistically when a light shines and hits an object in real life you get a little bit of glow bounce so i'm going to use i'm going to create a just a layer that's not clipped to the sequence that we've got with this like yellowy orangey color and basically, I'm just going to paint in where the light's going to hit Jude and maybe get rid of a little bit of it so it's not as harsh. And now we're going to change the layer mode to linear dodge and then bring this down slightly just so it's on like 8% maybe. And I'm going to take the other one that I had down. And it's just like a subtle glow, essentially. Maybe play around with the eye so it doesn't shine as much. But yeah, it just adds a little bit of realism of the way light works, basically. So I'm quite happy with that. And to kind of complement that, we're going to create a hue and saturation layer. We're going to clip this one to the sequence, bring it to the top. And I'm going to use this to paint a little bit of highlights into his hair and his face. Uh, so we're going to turn this to the colorized mode, bring up the saturation quite a bit, and then the lightness of it as well to around maybe plus 40. And then I'm going to change this blending mode to linear dodge. And then again, whilst you've got your layer mask selected, you're going to press Control and I or Command and I to invert the layer. And we're going to go in with a brush of, let's say, 11%, just to kind of paint in a little bit of the color of the light um, onto his face and maybe a little bit onto his arm and the ball here very quickly. 
Obviously, this is a very sped up process. You should probably take a lot more time and consideration when doing this, uh, but it's just, you get a rough idea and a rough guide of what I'm doing. So it should work. This is a little bit too harsh for me. So I'm probably going to bring it to around 60% just so we still keep a little bit of the light showing, but that, look, that looks pretty good. And now the final step basically of what I do I uh, basically select everything whilst you're holding shift just select all the layers uh, and then I'm going to turn all of this to a smart object and then the very last step obviously this is kind of uh, it's not necessary but I like to add a little bit of grain to my images at the end so you just create a camera raw filter you want to go into effect and bring the grain up to about 25 and it just adds a bit of texture to the image and it matches the background Obviously, if you're working on just a full piece, I'd just do it at the very last uh, kind of filter that you add to the full piece rather than just the cutout and you add the grain to the whole uh, whole design rather than just the kind of individual player, but it does work. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Let's kind of compare it to the edited. As you can see, I've actually done the shadows and highlights quite a lot harsher. Um, but I think it looks pretty good. You know, <laughs> we're close enough to it. Uh, and I'm pretty happy with the way this has actually turned out. So again, I'm going to show you the kind of the full before and after. So this is the image before and then the after, you know, it just looks a lot more. It pops a lot more. It's a lot more kind of stylized, a lot more 3D looking and a lot more alive in comparison to the, the original picture. Um, and yeah, you, obviously you can play around, tweak these settings however you want. Uh, so you can figure out what works for you. But this is just kind of a base kind of baseline or a guide that you can use in your work. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Again, if you enjoyed it, please do leave a like and a comment down below and obviously subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. I'm aiming for a video every two weeks, so keep an eye on the channel uh, and there'll be a tutorial or a speed art coming up next. So yeah, tune in next time when it comes out and uh, I hope to see you all again soon.